Isn't it good to live in America? I praise him this morning that I live where I live. Amen. What a blessing that it is this morning to to know that uh, we live in a free country. I was thinking a lot of time, let me say, it's good to have everybody here this morning. Uh, Good to have Paul's Susan's son back this morning. He works for Win Alabama. Anybody ought to take a relief out of Alabama every once in a while. <laughs> Amen. I used to preach a lot in Alabama, and I'd always put a note in my Bible. If I have a heart attack, fly me out of Alabama. <laughs> and... Uh, Sister Liz, I appreciate your daughter and grandkids and son-in-law coming. Amen. They've been coming, and I, and I appreciate that. Amen. Larry Wrinkler preached every night last this week, and his first message Monday night on to live in a world without a Bible. I never heard such a message in my life. To live in a world. I mean, that'll touch you. It'll stir your heart. To live in a world without a Bible. And there's worlds today that don't have the Bible. But I'm proud this morning that I live in America. The Bible said in John chapters number 8, verse 30, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then then are ye my disciple indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Ye shall be made free. Jesus said to them, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. The son, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That's what I want to preach about. I want to preach about America. I want to preach about our freedom that we have. Brother Tyler told me this morning they was almost at that airport that got blew up uh, this week and killed uh, several. I can't remember how many they killed. But, uh, you know, man has put us really in fear here in America. I mean, we live... We live, I said, probably amongst 1,200 at night this week, and I saw people that looked strange walk down the aisle, and I thought about, you know, I, I thought in my mind what could take place and what could happen. But I'm proud that God has given us a free country, and I'm proud the Lord has given us liberty, and I'm proud that we live and a nation that still has liberty and freedom. There's been a price, there's been a sacrifice made for this, but I am so thankful this morning that, uh, that we live in a free land. Some nights I try to think about things and keep my mind from worrying, and last night I went to bed, Brother Tim, and I got to thinking about the first church that I preached in that had an air condition. I, re- I thought about, I remembered the first church that I preached in that had a microphone on the pulpit. I remember, I remember the first television that I ever seen. I remember that. I remember J.E. J. Glass said they was, he lives over at Calhoun. And he's the preacher, Brother Tim. Miss Carol knows him. 
And he said they was in the cotton patch of picking cotton and this team wall come over the hill and his daddy sent him to the house to get the shotgun and it got down the road a little piece and he shot it in a radiator. Thought it was something out of space as a team model coming down the road. <laughs> I mean, listen, hear me. God has been good to America. I remember I pastored Ivy Log. They didn't have an air condition. We built that new house behind the church and we never had an air condition. I mean, I remember when folks didn't have air condition. Amen. I remember when they wasn't subdivisions. Amen. I remember when they wasn't microwaves. I, I remember when they wasn't pantyhose. I mean, I, I was born before all of this, you see. But I honor America this morning. I honor it. Listen, they were... I, I want to talk about the men just for a minute. They were honest in their principles, wasn't they? I'm telling you, they were, they were, uh, they were, they were men of integrity, and they were men. The word was their bond. I promise you, I promise you, if a man told you something, you could, you could really count on it. Th their values. Were, the, were Bible based on those that were saved. Our nation was built on the Word of God. Our nation was built on the Bible. And this is what we call the old school. They anchored themselves down deeply with scriptures and back in the old days. I mean, they anchored themselves Listen, they had Bible principles. They were honest. They were hardworking. And there was no time for deadbeats back in that day. I remember, I remember those days. They had a character. They loved their family. They loved their church. And they loved God. And you know, back in when I first started preaching, you didn't have this station. Folks just come to church. You didn't have. The reason there are so many Baptist churches today like Ebenezer and Gumlog and many forks, men went off to war. And uh, the women didn't have nothing to drive. And they met in houses and had cottage prayer meetings. They'd have cottage prayer meetings on Sunday morning. And then when the men come back, stood in they just started a church where that, them families had been meeting. And that's what bloomed out was these churches that men had been in war and sacrificed and gave. And beloved, thank God for a marker that is built on the Word of God, that is built on principles, and it's built on the Scriptures this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, not only the value of our forefathers, but the courage of a military to die. You know what? It's really been amazing down through the years. All the men and women that has been shot in uniform on foreign soil, that yet young men stood up and women went down and signed and said, I want to go and I want to serve. You know why? Because that we might have freedom in the United States of America. You see, they sacrificed. They uh, they a saying, they a writing says, give me liberty or give me death. That's what they said. And listen, uh, it's been the motto, America, uh, the motto that America stands for America and will fight for America, shed blood for America. You know why? Because of our kids, because of our families, because of the church, because of the Bible, and because of God. Amen. We'll stand. I mean, men, men, uh, uh, they, they fought in wars. They, uh, they give their life. They died and uh, could not count the countless millions that have died uh, on the battlefield and in the branch of the military. And uh, they lay behind bodies and uh, where they've been shot, where they've been killed, and 
uh, beloved, uh, of the military. I mean, folks, uh, thank God for those that have served uh, in our military and stood up to, uh, that you and I might have freedom <coughs> this morning. Brother Richard served. Brother Ron served. Brother Kenneth served uh, in the armed forces. Others served in the armed uh, forces uh, that you and I might be free. They go to the battlefields and uh, uh, they went to Germany and they went to South Africa, North Africa, and then Arlington National Cemetery where there's a tomb of the unknown at, that it says this is engraved on the tomb. American soldier known but to God. The only one knows who he is is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm proud the Lord knows us. I'm proud the Lord here uh, knows who we are. Listen, families have sacrificed. Sons and daughters have sacrificed. They've shed their blood. But I'm proud this morning to be a Christian, to be saved, to be washed in the blood, uh, to be counted his child, to be in his family heaven bound this morning. One day he's coming. One day I'm going. If he don't come, I'm going anyway. Hey, listen to me this morning. I've had the privilege to hear the gospel. I lived in the land of the free. I could go where I wanted to to church. I could hear what preacher I wanted to hear. Hey, listen to me. What freedom we have in America. Some folks say they don't like America. They ought to leave America. I, I love it. I don't want to leave it. I want to stay with it. But one day... I will leave, but I will join up with the pilgrims of God another day with all of God's soldiers, all of God's children. We'll join up in another land. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that woman? I'm proud. I'm proud this morning that families have sacrificed daughters. They've sacrificed their money. They've sacrificed their possessions. Uh, they've sacrificed their personal desires to keep America free. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm proud this morning that I live in this great land that old glory still flies. Amen. And I still honor that. And I lay my hand on my uh, right of my chest when they pledge allegiance to that flag. If I watch it on TV and they are pledging the flag, I lay my hand up and I pledge the flag. I got so much honor for this flag this morning. I've got so much honor for this book, for this book this morning. I mean, beloved, uh, I'm telling you, America is one of the greatest nations in the world. Did you know? I mean, I mean, we're... Uh, they are diverse people. They's black, they's white, they's brown, but everybody loves everybody. It's amazing. One of my best friends in high school was a black boy. And the reason he was my friend, he lived right down below us. They rented a house. My daddy and him owned a farm, and we farmed. And they, they moved down next to the peach orchard, and they worked in the peach orchard. And his name was Gerald. And we used to play basketball every evening after school. He was one of the greatest friends probably in high school that I ever had. This world is diversity. But I'm telling you, folks love one another. Folks care for one another. You get in, you get in, in this church and you see who comes. This church will back you if they know it. This church will help you if they know it. Hey, folks, I, I mean, folks love one another. When I was found out I had cancer, I'm telling you, I thought I was going to gain 100 pounds. Folks bring stuff to the house to eat, and you got to eat it. I mean, you feel bad, they bring it, and you don't eat it. And, I, and we try to make everything, dis we don't freeze nothing, we eat. I mean, it may be a three-day run. We may have it for three nights, but we'll finally lick the bowls. You know, it's really amazing. I mean, Miss Marvine, uh, Miss Marvine, 
come to the house every other day. She got to bring in these apple donuts, sweet. They'd all be gone by dark, 12. I told Miss Marvin, she said, I'm going to Blue Ridge. I said, don't bring no donuts. I'll get where I couldn't button my britches. I mean, I mean, what a blessing. What a blessing. Uh, she is, and others, the sprawl. I mean, it's really, it's really been amazing. But isn't it good? Isn't it good to live, I mean, in a community, to live in a county where people love one another? Now, I know Union County has changed. These mountains have changed. I mean, there was a time everybody lived here were mountain people. Did you know that? My daddy told me when I was moving to the mountains, he said, son, the mountain people are different. That's the words, the very words. He said, I'm telling you, if you got a small attic mouth, you won't last in the mountains. He said, they'll put you over that hill very quickly. Them was, my daddy run a gas truck for the state. And he, he'd come up here, and he got to be big buddies with uh, uh, some of these people up here. A lot of people up here know my daddy. And, uh, but my daddy loved these mountains. And, and I love these mountains. The second day me and Glenda went on, I had a 50 Ford on a Sunday afternoon, and we drove from Maysville to Vogel State Park in that 50 Ford. Didn't get out of the car, just made a circle around Vogel State Park. And I said, oh, God, please, somehow or another, let me move. <laughs> but we was just dating. I wasn't but 16. But I'm telling you, 16-year-olds back then act like 25-year-olds or 30-year-olds. Hear me? This, this country's diverse. But I'm going to give you one more thing. And I'll be through. Listen, folks. Hear me this morning. There's been a drastic change in America. Did you know that? There's been a drastic change in America. We got, it's bad. I mean, people killing. They had five in Atlanta one night this week killed. They had 18 last Saturday night in Chicago killed. They've done had 1,800 this year in Chicago murdered. 1,800. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that something? I mean, that the hatred of folks. But oh, not only we honor the men, we honor America, then I want to honor Israel. I want to honor Israel. I, I want to love Israel. The Bible said, I, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. Did you know what? The White House won't have nothing to do with Israel. But have you noticed all the floods and the fires that are taking place? He said he'd bless them that blessed Israel. But he would curse them that cursed Israel. Look at all the things that are happening in our country. All the fires, the homes burning up, the floods, the floods uh, killing people. Uh, up in uh, Virginia, 22, the last account had drowned it in that rain flood that, that had come. And, and God said this, if we would bless Israel, he would bless us. And Israel is God's chosen people. And we're to, we're, to bless, we're to bless Israel. God still blesses those who bless Israel. But he curses those that curse Israel. You know what? I want to hang on to Israel's coattail. Amen. I mean, they are God's people. They are, they are God's people. Then... Uh, uh, then this morning, God gave birth 
to this nation. America is blessed because our motto is, in God we trust. On my money that, that I've got in my pocket this morning, somewhere on my money, it says, our motto says, in God we trust. It's our money that's got God we trust. Not only does my money say in God we trust, but my heart also says in God we trust. You can trust the Lord. I want you to wake up. You can trust the Lord. This lady, the Lord told her that he was going to give her 40 more years to live. Well, she went and got a facelift. She got a tummy tuck. She got everything stretched out as she could. And she looked like a doll. She was so beautiful. She stepped out on the highway and a truck hit her. Just hit her. And she looked up and said, Lord, I thought you was going to let me live 40 years. He said, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> You'll get that. <laughs> Amen. I want the Lord to recognize me as an American, as a Christian, as a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, you, I'll dawn on you about 11 o'clock tonight, and you'll turn in overtime. <laughs> and you'll think about that. My aunt, daddy's sister, is 85. And I thought I'd made her mad about the election. And uh, she, uh, I hadn't heard from her. And she called last night, first time, and talked till 5 after 10. And I told her that little tale, and she was laughing when I hung up. <laughs> and she probably sat up all night. She's 85, <coughs> the only ain't I got left. And, uh, but listen, we have freedom in America that we might enjoy. You see, we can travel unopposed. If you got the money, you can go anywhere you want to. Amen. If you got, if I had Tim's money, I'd take Gwenda to Hawaii. <laughs> and Terry would go with me. And Connie. We can be what we desire to be. Did you know every young person can be what they want to be in America. They can go to any college. They can start a business. They can get the highest of education. They can do anything they want to do in America. They can drive a car. They can ride a bicycle. Some's riding motorcycles. Listen, we can worship in America where we want to worship. We can go to any church that we want to go to, and if they don't act like we do, we can still worship. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. We can think the way we want to think. I can think anything I want to think. And you don't want to know sometimes what I think. And I'm sure I don't want to know what you think. You know. I can speak, I can express my opinion, right or wrong. I can express it, can I? You may not agree with it, but I can still express it. I live in America. They will not stone me because I express my opinion. I live in America. Listen, if I think the two presidents, uh, two people that's running for president, I ain't fitting to be president. I can think what I want to think. And I know none of y'all think that. You know, one's under investigation. 
I don't know what the other ones are. But it ain't good. I mean, listen, wouldn't it be great if some godly men would step out yeah, and step up, yeah. say we love God and the Bible and we want to run for the president of the United States? Yeah. That bunch up there, that bunch up there in, in Washington, you know what they'd do? Oh, man, they'd do everything to keep them out. They don't want God in America. But I'm telling you, he ain't leaving. He's here to stay. He's here to stay. I'm proud that he's here to stay. Listen this morning. The greatest of all, our liberty, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The son that died on the cross. That's our greatest liberty this morning, is having him is our personal Savior. Miss Carol, would you come? This morning, thank God for America, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, for saving us and washing us in, in the blood and making us new creatures in Christ. Just like it's happening in that tent meeting over in Burlington, just like up in West Virginia and Mississippi. I want you to look at me. I want you to listen to me. Any of God's children could have that if they wanted it. Any of God's children, what would you give, what would you really give this morning to see your whole family saved? I mean, really, what would you, what would you give? Would you be faithful to church to see them saved? Would you be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ to see them saved? You see, one of these days, one of these days, this thing's going to be over with. We're either going to be in heaven or we're either going to be in hell. One of them. One, one, there's two places. And I'm proud, I'm proud this morning. God gives a man a choice. He can make a choice to either go to heaven or go to hell. What would your choice be? Really, would you stand? What would your choice this morning be? As Miss Carol sings. What would your choice be this morning? Stephen stood with hands tied As rocks pierced his flesh He died for proclaiming Jesus Oh, Stephen stood the test while then there's Matthew and there's Peter martyred for sharing Christ. The enemy has tried to defeat us, but they'll never hurt the bride. I am a Christian. I am God's soldier. tried to tear the walls of this church down the faithful men and women have built on higher ground and today you're not popular if you try to live yes. your life well you can have your popularity but please just give me Tell me I'm dead wrong. I am a Christian in God. 